despite uh, recent uh, interest and the positive news and the recent interest of venture capitalists and investors on Nigerian tech startups, the crude reality is that Nigeria is nowhere a tech country or a tech economy. The Nigerian tech startup scene is mostly concentrated in Lagos. Lagos is the most populated and the fastest growing city on the African continent. It's a rising star in the global startup ec ecosystem. The city has transformed tremendously in the last four years, as reflected in the skyrocketing smartphone use and connectivity. These technological advances resulting from digitization from these tech startups have generated some benefits and opportunities for the society and equally influencing and changing the ways in which people interact and also the very nature of our business environment. But it hasn't improved the technology ecosystem. Let's consider the following. Most major startup cities in the world are majorly sustained by the following. Legacy technology businesses and universities. So we should ask, are these uh, sustaining our Nigerian tech startups. Again, we should ask how many Nigerian made commercial software benefited from the e-commerce boom or is it hype? Equally, we should ask, as we know, the biggest spenders of technology in Nigeria are the following sectors. Financial, government, manufacturing, oil and gas, and services. Are these tech startups building for this sector? We should also ask, is Nigeria listed on the Bloomberg 100 Innovation Index? Unfortunately, only three African countries made it. But what criteria to be in this index? Research, manufacturing, technology companies, education, patent. And the three countries we have from Africa are Tunisia, which is number 94, South Africa, number 99, and Morocco, 100. Again, we should ask, is Nigeria among the top uh, software industry in the world? Only two countries, Egypt and South Africa, are making Africa re relevant in the global software market. Now, the global software market is a 400 billion market, and Africa is contributing around $2 billion. Nigerian software market is around $2 billion in size, and the African software market is $5 billion. So the question now is, are tech startups in Nigeria really helping the, uh, the country to become a tech country? The question is no. So we'll now talk about uh, why so? But first, let's define what a startup is. A startup is an entrepreneurial venture, which is typically a newly emerged, fast growing business that aims to meet a marketplace need by developing a viable business model around an innovative product, services, or platform. So it's all about high risk. Startups have high rates of failure. And why do they have this uh, uh, high rate of failure? Simply because of so many genuine business reasons, and equally because of its high risk. But it's also fueled by hype and facade. Unfortunately, our young folks who are impressionable and impatient are embracing this without enough knowledge, insight, lack understanding of its implication for a poorly uh, educated and poverty-stricken continent like Africa. The following abstract I'm going to talk nails it. Owing to the hype created, instead of wanting to turn a solution or a product into an organized structure in the form of a firm, entrepreneurship came to be interpreted as starting a company first and then finding the answer to what it is we have to do. Hence, the global startup failure rate today at 95%. We 
one, one of the things that we do is that we also conflict terminologies and terms. For instance, anytime we mention technology or startup, people would think it's, we are talking the other thing. So we conflate words like technology with startup. We misuse terms like technology ecosystem to mean developer community. And even platforms colonialism is not helping matters. Africa needs to understand the technology terminologies properly. Bringing clarity to the conversation is always fundamental so as to reduce this effect. We also conflate the following terms in our vision and disruption. Now, let me give you some history. In 1983, Professor Oliver Mobesin developed the first black Africa commercially produced line of personal computers and servers at the Anambra State University, Asutec, present day Asutec, Asut Nandazikiwe, and Co. An effort described by the then head of state, Alaji Sheo Shagari, as blazing the trail for Nigerians' quest for technology development. These computers were named Asutec 800 and 8000 series. Unfortunately, we didn't build on this. Eight years later, the personal computer revolution started in Nigeria, creating lots of computer businesses like computer sales, computer assemblies, com software development, networking, desktop publishing. But sadly, it was not based on our earlier achieved feat. By the 90s, Nigeria was in the world tech mark because software developed in Nigeria were being used locally and exported to many Western countries. With a high point uh, being when the banking software developed by a Nigerian company called Tara System were used in over 800 banks in the United States of America alone. Uh, Sulere, a district in uh, uh, Lagos, was the Silicon Valley of Lagos. It had over 250 computer companies. Nigeria had over 5,000 computer schools all over the country. These were well before India became uh, a big force in information technology. Unfortunately, our tech boom couldn't be sustained for long. It died after the Y2K uh, hype due to many factors. In all, we had over 1,000 tech companies in Nigeria uh, with about 35 of them owning 75% market share. Then there were no venture capitalists to fund uh, software houses. Technology ministry, there was none. There was no ICT agency and there was no ICT policy. Now, Nigeria as of 2015 imported 2.5 billion worth of software. We pirated 190 million software we exported only $5 million ICT equipment. Software export from Nigeria was zero. Now, what is this situation we are? Nigeria was never building technology pillars. Nigeria had no culture of research and development. We've mentioned about it here. And uh, there were no broad innovation enablers. And without this element, it would be hard for us to develop an indigenous technology capability. Building most of our technology solutions or building most of our digital technology solutions or consumerizing technologies on foreign digital platforms would do us no good. We cannot have the capacity to evolve our technology ecosystems if we do not invest in the fundamental elements that make technology development happen. When these foreign digital platforms dictate rollout of technology, there is less and less opportunities for innovation or invention most times, it benefits these platforms and their hosts. This is what we call digital colonization. Yes, we, we are being colonized by platforms like Facebook, Google, and Co. In other words, any limitation imposed by these digital platforms, owing to how it sees the global problem, will limit our abilities to create solutions that address our needs. That is, we are only accelerating the vision of these digital platforms. Let's define what technology ecosystem is. A technology ecosystem is an inter 
connected in the interdependent network of actors that combine to create innovative technology products and services. It's also a distributed adaptive open socio-technical system with properties of self-organization, scalability, and sustainability. And it's inspired by the natural ecosystems we read about in our biology. Now, it has the following actors. Universities and polytechnics, technology businesses, hubs and accelerators, entrepreneurs, startups, research institutes. The other secondary supporting factors, which include uh, the media, the government, a strong human resource pool, educational system, and uh, an entrepreneurial culture, coupled with a local infrastructure that will support founders and invest investors communicating, solving problems together, and coming up with innovative ideas. Successful tech ecosystem allows for any smaller company in the ecosystem to bring innovation to market. Operating alone will be difficult and in many instances impossible without the ongoing help of the tech ecosystem in a, in a market dominated by larger companies. Now, why do we say this? Because the larger companies need the smaller companies to get technology that will make them better. There are three kinds of technology. We have biological or science technology, which involves science and is all about the process on the line, leading it to all forms of technology, which includes new neurotechnology, stem cells, genomics, bioinformatics, synthetic biology. So we have the physical technology, which is about the tools, machinery, and gadgets used both within industry and by consumers. So we have batteries, nanomaterials, autonomous vehicles, wearables, and internet of things. Then we have, finally, we have the digital or information technology, which is about communication technology, about computer technology, and about computer software. So that's where you have artificial intelligence, augmented reality, blockchain, databases, and so on. We cannot sacrifice all these fundamental elements of technology with fixation on coding or programming. Now, let me deal with some of these actors of uh, the ecosystem. First, government. It's the government's job to plan and manage education in a society. Government technology is also important because we need to take it very seriously here in Nigeria. It's part of governance. It will help to bring the government citizens together, and it has a role in developing and sustaining local technology ecosystem. Government technology is used to support and promote local technology. So because they are the biggest spenders in the economy, they should be spending on uh, local technology, thereby improving the local companies. Now let's talk about universities and education. The foundation of a tech ecosystem is universities, polytechnics, and technical schools. Without having them, the tech ecosystem becomes sustainable. One of the goals of education is to create men who are capable of doing things, not simply repeating what other generations have done. This statement was made by a man called Piaget. Our universities and polytechnics, if built properly, ought to be a socially cohesive environment to launch invention and innovation that will solve our local problem. The university is also the planning stages for our society's aspiration. They are the drivers of disruptive technological change like automatic automation and artificial intelligence. Most of Nigerians' problems today can be solved with technology. And when we talk technology, we are talking of applied science and engineering. And all we need to get answers to our problem is to support research. Research activities are low in Nigeria, where we have only 38 researchers per million population as of 2015. 38. The global average is 1,083. Side note. The reason why certain countries like USA, Canada, Israel, China are where they are is because they have smart governments who understand the fundamentals of this to the development of ecosystem. A good case I'll give you is China. China's rise in artificial intelligence is incredible. China lagged the Western countries in research, but its tech companies and universities made up for lost ground. They started promoting local research. 
Also, recently, the Chinese Medical Ministry of Education encouraged universities to set up new degrees program to reflect the need of the society. Example, big data and artificial intelligence. So that you could cater to their social and economic development needs. Let's talk about research. It's easy to take cutting edge research for granted, but most breakthroughs that improve our lives start as a government sponsored research. That statement was made by Bill Gates. We also need to know that scientific and, and not entrepreneurial leadership is driving American innovation with input from research from both federal government, uh, corporate entities, and academia. Higher education research and development in agriculture is a sample. Sub-Saharan um, Africa averages 12.7 million on research. And those doing the research, 29% of them have PhD. Brazil has 213 million. China, 402 million. India, 735 million with 89% uh, PhDs. Research in Nigeria, they are only, they are, we have 152 universities with 21 research institutions. We still have yeah, the 38 research uh, per million. Uh, global average is 1,083. Nigeria spends 1.2 million uh, billion dollars on research, but South Africa spends 4.7 billion dollars. This is as at 2015. China spent 369 billion dollars. Now let's talk about startups. A successful startup ecosystem is built on top of legacy tech foundation. Building the startup before building a tech foundation is dead on arrival. It needs to be sustained. I'll give you an example. In uh, Cambridge University, they have 1,500 tech companies built around the University of Cambridge, and they're employing 60,000 people. If you all know, uh, ARM uh, chips that you get in smartphones, running 95% of smartphones comes from Cambridge University. And everybody is involved, researchers, graduates, lecturers are involved in these companies. Now, tech companies. Tech companies are business organizations that produce, they, they do two things. Um, they produce, sell technologies and technology products. Secondly, they use technology or technologies to offer services. Unfortunately, most of the technology companies that were created during the technology boom in the early 90s were of the first one that produces technology products. Most technology startups now use technology to uh, do their uh, start startup. So in conclusion, we need to do certain things. First thing is that uh, government needs to change. So the, the attitude of the government has to change. We need to inject visionaries, uh, creative thinkers, uh, leaders, and innovators in government. And we also need to start without bureaucracy, because bureaucracy stifle innovative, uh, think, innovation, innovative thinking, and critical thinking. We also. Uh, uh, Nigerian government needs to understand that these days, wealth of nations are being determined by data flows. So platforms like Facebook, Google cannot hold our data and be making money for their host countries. We need to start supporting local uh, platforms so that we use our own data and make money for ourselves locally. We can embrace, we can embrace digital platform uh, uh, business model today by adopting open data. Open data will be based on our challenges and opportunities we have. Then we need to fundamentally need to understand this, that the web is not a winner takes it all. The web is for everybody on earth so that everything can express itself and use it to boost their economy. Government need to sponsor research, support universities to get funding, and they need to improve uh, uh, research activities. Universities really need to improve research activities. And when they do this, it will lead the industry to create uh, better products that will have social economic impact on the society. Uh, in truth, uh, tech companies can partner with uh, smaller uh, startups and then create products. But uh, we can also come together and aid other sectors of the economy like technology, like health, agriculture, and uh, other sectors of the economy to boost the economy. Thank you very much. <laughs>